Health experts fear the worst of the pandemic is coming in the first few weeks of 2021. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee and tonight for Barbara Lee Edwards. The number of available ICU beds continues to drop and there are concerns that holiday gatherings will lead to an even bigger surge of COVID cases in the coming weeks. News 8's Brandon Lewis has more on how Scripps Health is managing a flood of new cases. Carlo and Marcella, there are just seven staffed ICU beds available in the entire Scripps system. When we spoke with the CEO earlier today, he was blunt, as he always is, in talking about what could possibly be ahead. But he also got emotional, explaining that there were 30 patients who died from coronavirus this weekend alone. I'm almost pleading. Please, please stay at home. Scripps staff are trying to cope with a crush of coronavirus cases from Thanksgiving. Within the next two weeks, a second surge from Christmas is expected to hit. Unfortunately, we're discharging fewer than we're admitting, so our beds are filling up. And right now, today, we're talking about bringing in EMTs, uh, medical assistants, and others uh, just to support the RNs. Scripps is already in surge status. They're exceeding normal staff to patient ratios. There are plans to put up treatment tents in parking lots and even use the gift shop for bed space if needed. The length of stay for these patients um, probably averaging around 12 to 15 days, which is a much longer length of stay. But we have patients sometimes that are in the hospital for 30 days, 40 days, 50 days or longer. So it's not that we fill up the hospital and these patients come in and they go home quickly. Um, they come in and they stay on top of other patients that need a bed. There's also the toll this is taking on staff who have worked for almost a year without a break. This weekend, they cared for patients who celebrated their last Christmas without family by their side. We probably had more than 30 patients die over this last weekend, you know, and our our nurses, our doctors are their family members, you know, and so they're not only caring for them, they're caring for them emotionally and they're caring for their families outside of the hospital. This is a really serious issue um, and we're tired and we need and we need our, our community support. The governor says it is likely we will see the stay at home order extended when it's reassessed tomorrow. He also says these capacity concerns at hospitals could continue through February. Carlo and Marcella. Tonight, San Diego County is reporting less than 2,000 new coronavirus cases for the first time in two weeks, but the number of hospitalizations has hit a new milestone. 1,751 new positive cases were reported today out of just under 19,000 tests. That makes for a positive rate of about 9%. 68 more people were hospitalized with COVID-19, pushing total hospitalizations above 1,500 for the first time. 14 of those were admitted into intensive care units. The county is also reporting two additional deaths. Don't put your umbrellas away just yet. And if you're heading east, make sure to carry some chains in your car. You probably heard it. That storm has moved in, bringing rain to our coast and inland areas and snow up to our local mountains. Tonight, a winter storm warning is in effect. Meteorologist Carleen Chavis is tracking the storm and we'll have more on that in just a moment. First, let's go to Sean Stiles, who starts our coverage tonight from Mount Laguna. While it was all rain in the valleys, it was snow here in the mountains and plenty of it. The storm brought snow to the mountains, which meant road restrictions, change required if you were heading up Sunrise Highway. An hour away, it's totally different. At elevation, there was plenty of snow, at least two to four inches in the Laguna Play area. The snow plow was out, keeping the roads clear so families could play in the snow. First family we met were the Mendozas out of National City. Here's Karina. A lot of snow. Um, we're going to actually make snowmans right now. Yeah? Yes. Are you surprised that there's this much? Yes, I've never seen snow in real life, you know, so it's fun. This is your first time? Yes. Wow. <laughs> you hit the jackpot. I know. <laughs> While the Mendozas were having fun on the intermediate hill, over on the advanced hill, well, there was some transplants from Chicago. Ringers, I might say. The Zizerson family. Cousin Sam. That's why I told him. He's like, we're going to go see the snow. I was like, I came to San Diego from Chicago to see snow. But these guys know they're sledding. Blast off! <laughs> While the Zizersons ruled the advanced hill, plenty of folks were out having fun. Families, though, were playing by COVID rules while around others in Mother Nature. 
And while the snow continued to fly, it was hard to believe this was only just over an hour outside of downtown San Diego, a winter wonderland in sunny Southern California. Well, it's the usual rules when you come to the mountain, take out what you brought in. Remember, if you're gonna come up here, be prepared for the cold and have change. And the other thing in this COVID period, Frosty and I social distancing six feet apart. <laughs> Who made that snowman? Oh man, that's cute. All right, your forecast. Well, we are definitely talking about some rain as well as some snow. Sean got the good assignment. He was out there in Mount Laguna just enjoying a white winter wonderland. I'm Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis. As we go into tonight, we are still holding on to shower chances. Now for downtown, it is cloudy, 59 degrees current temperature. We also have winds out of the south southwest at 11 miles per hour. But taking a look at that live radar, we're not done just yet. We have more shower activity on the way. So we are still seeing some showers and a line of them that are starting to move in right towards downtown as well as Del Mar stretching all the way to Oceanside, Fallbrook, heavier pockets of rainfall and even more that is offshore that's going to move in. So we are not done just yet. And as I mentioned, we're going to talk about shower activity into the overnight hours as well as more mountain snow and that uh, winter storm warning still going until tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. Also big waves along the coast are going to stick around into the middle of the week and we will dry out as soon as tomorrow afternoon, but we're not going to drastically warm up. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that eight day coming up. Carlo, Marcella. All right, enjoying a taste of winter finally. Yes. Last night, President Trump signed the COVID relief package and demanded Congress more than triple the amount of direct relief payments to Americans. Tonight, the House delivered. But the measure faces an uphill climb in the Republican-controlled Senate, setting up a fight between President Trump and his own party. Skylar Henry explains. The bill is passed. The House approved a bill to increase direct stimulus payments from $600 to $2,000, one day after President Trump finally signed the COVID relief bill into law. Putting money into the hands of the American people is a boost to our economy. I worry that this whopping $463 billion won't do what's needed. The president's sudden shift on the bill brings relief to many financially strapped Americans, but his delay resulted in a one-week lapse in unemployment benefits for more than 14 million recipients. The yeas are 322, the nays are 87. House lawmakers voted to override the president's veto of the critical defense bill that funds the U.S. military. If the Senate also votes to override Tuesday, it'll be the first veto override of Mr. Trump's presidency. Senate Republicans have not committed to bringing up a vote on increased stimulus payments. Senate Democrats are calling on President Trump to persuade them. These Senate Republicans have followed you through thick and thin. Get them now to act and support the $2,000 checks. President Trump played another round of golf Monday in South Florida. You the $2,000 right yes. President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris met virtually with members of his national security and foreign policy teams in Delaware. We just aren't getting all the information that we need for the ongoing, outgoing, and from the outgoing administration in key national security areas. It's nothing short, in my view, of irresponsibility. Pentagon officials tell CBS News that meetings with the Biden transition team have paused for the holidays. They're expected to resume next month. Skyler Henry, Capitol Hill. The Biden transition officials say Vice President-elect Kamala Harris and her husband Doug Emhoff will receive their first doses of the COVID vaccine tomorrow. A big step forward when it comes to vaccinating some of the San Diegans who need it the most. The pharmacy chain is bringing COVID vaccine to seniors where they live. As News 8's Steve Price reports, thousands of care facilities across the state have signed up for the program. Many of San Diego's most vulnerable residents are, for various reasons, unable to get to locations where COVID-19 vaccines are being distributed. So today, thanks to CVS pharmacies, the shots started coming to them. I am very excited about this vaccine. I think it is the answer to this COVID pandemic. So we have Cheryl Wilson uh, is CEO uh, of St. Paul's uh, Senior Services, and she says many of their residents who have been through pandemics before are ready to roll up their sleeves. They understand this, and they're excited to receive the vaccine, and they're spreading the word to our employees, too. It's very, very helpful. 
St. Paul's is one of more than 15,000 skilled nursing and assisted living facilities across the state that registered with CVS to participate. The pharmacy hopes to vaccinate nearly 700,000 patients through the program. What we'll do is send teams in. They'll have full protective equipment, so-called PPE, um, and have uh, the vaccines with them. The CVS team will come back in three weeks to administer a second shot of the vaccine and give a first shot to any new patients and staff. Then they'll come back a third time to make sure everyone has their second dose. These vaccines and their effectiveness has been a game changer. But if people can't get the shot, the vaccine does no good, which is why St. Paul's is so happy that CVS and Walgreens have partnered with the federal government to bring the shots to those who really need it. Oh my gosh, for our skilled nursing facility residents, it is amazing. There is no way we could drag them all out to a, another location off site. And it's convenient for the staff who don't have to take time off from work or search for a place to get the vaccine. That said, St. Paul's knows there is still a long way to go before COVID-19 is no longer a concern. Even after the vaccine, people are gonna be encouraged to wear their masks, obviously wash their hands, and distance as much as possible. But there will be a sense of relief to, uh, to our employees to know that their vulnerability is greatly decreased. CVS also has an agreement with the federal government to provide vaccinations to the general public. A start date for that hasn't been announced, but officials believe it could happen as soon as the end of April, early May. In Claremont, Steve Price, News 8. Thank you, Steve. To keep up to date on the vaccine, just text the word vaccine to 858-571-8888. You'll get a link with all of our latest stories on the subject. With spring training still weeks away, the San Diego Padres are making a big move. Yeah, the team is reportedly finalizing a deal for former American League Cy Young winner Blake Snell, and there could be even more deals in the works. News 8's sports director Kyle Kraska fills us in. Padres general manager A.J. Preller has been on a mission since the baseball season ended two months ago to significantly improve his starting rotation, and he is doing exactly that as the new year approaches with two blockbuster deals. 2018 Cy Young Award winner Blake Snell is coming to San Diego via Tampa Bay in exchange for four prospects, including catcher Francisco Mejia and flamethrower Luis Patino. Snell is one of baseball's best left-handers and was nearly unhittable against the Dodgers in the World Series back in October. And if that's not enough, Preller is also putting the finishing touches on a deal with the Cubs to potentially acquire right-hander Hugh Darvish, who's coming off one of his best seasons at the age of 34. He was 8-3 with a 2.01 earned run average, and he was second in the NL Cy Young Award voting. I will have more on these trades and a deal to acquire a spectacular Korean League infielder coming up in sports in about 40 minutes. I hope to see you then. I'm Kyle Kraska. Padres loading up. Fans yeah, are excited. Something to be excited about. Understandably, yeah. Year, right? we, can, we can all, yeah, there's a lot of exactly. things to look forward in yeah. 2021, hopefully.